In this coding exercise, we are going to walk through how we can implement some more string interpolation. We've covered that in a few other guides, but I wanted to give another practical example of how you could do it. So let's pretend that you were creating a Ruby gem and you needed the ability to dynamically generate HTML code that is actually something that we can use string interpolation for and use some more kind of advanced ways of implementing it. But as I think you'll see, they're not so advanced that they're difficult to do. So right here, I have a test. We're going to create a HTML H1 heading converter. It's going to output an H1 tag given a title. And what we have here is we're going to have a method called title creator, and then it is going to take in one argument, which is a string, and then it should output a h1 tag. So it should output a slice of HTML just like this. So let's get going. They're going to create a method, and this is going to be called title creator. And the method needs to take in a string. So we could say that it takes in a heading or a title or anything like that. Let's say title just to keep it nice and uniform. So it takes in a title. And so the first thing that I think we need to do is essentially create a collection on what that heading is going to look like. Because what we want to do is actually create the ability to have three elements. So when I mean three elements, what I mean is right here, we have a beginning tag of the H1, we have the elements inside of it, and then we have the closing tag. And so this is something that we need if we're going to implement this, we need to think of this as a heading having three components. So I'm going to create a variable called heading, and then I'm going to use a way of creating an array or a collection here where I'm going to use the percent %w, and then inside of it, I'm going to create our elements. Now this is pretty much the same thing as me you know, just creating, creating an array like this, except I kind of like the syntax a little bit better. I think it's easier to read. So I'm going to do percent %w followed by curly brackets. And inside of this, even though we're working with strings, I don't actually have to use the string syntax. I can just type in h1, then I can say something like title, placeholder, and this is where our title is going to slide in, and then I can have h1 again closing this out. So this is our collection, and if you're wondering exactly what this is creating, I can copy this, and let's actually run the code. So if I run this code, you can see that what a heading what the heading variable generates is just a normal array. It's an h1 title placeholder and h1. So this is the same thing as if we use the regular bracket syntax, but this is I think kind of a cool way of writing it and also it, you don't you can type less code, which is typically a good thing. So we have our heading collection now it's stored in a heading variable and the very first thing that we need to do is select this placeholder. So I'm going to select the placeholder which I can do by saying heading and then I'm going to pass one in and then set that equal to the title. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying in the heading array, I want to select this value and instead of it being title placeholder, I'm just going to slide title in. So whatever the value that got passed into the argument right here, it's going to slide in right here and it's going to replace the title placeholder. And we can test this out if I just copy this, come down here, we can actually run it. So I'm going to give title an actual string value. So I'll say my title here. And now if we print out what heading looks like, you'll see that now we have an H1 followed by my title followed by another H1. So that does successfully swap that value out. Now let's delete that, come back up, and we only have one other item that we have to do, which is to now implement 
the H1 tags. So we have H1 in terms of some string values here, but we actually need to slide this in to tag. So we should have something that looks like H1 title followed by H1. So we have normal kind of HTML syntax. And this is where a very cool form of string interpolation is possible as it relates to taking in array values. So if I start with a string and inside of this, I'm going to give angle brackets and I'm gonna say angle bracket percent S, close it out, angle bracket percent S, then create the closing tag. So here I can say angle bracket with a slash and then another S, close it out, and then pass in a percent followed by heading. This is gonna give us exactly what we want. And this is what is so cool about this string interpolation syntax. Many times when we hear about string interpolation, usually you get kind of the idea of, let me, Let's switch into IRB over here. And usually string interpolation is something like this. So we have some kind of string and then we want to slide it into something else. And so we can do inside of a string, we can say hi there and then follow that up with the hash symbol with curly brackets and then pass whatever Ruby we want inside of it and it says hi there. And this works perfectly and there are many times when you do this. I probably use this syntax on a daily basis in applications. However, there are also times when you need to do something a little bit more advanced like this, where we want to slide in a collection of values. So instead of just taking a string like I did on the right hand side, here we're taking three strings and sliding them in and then simply passing in a array element. And so what Ruby is going to do is it's going to be able to parse that and say this is the first element in the collection, this is the second, and this is the third. So if I come down here, we can test this out. I'm going to say title creator, say my title, and let's run this. And you can see right here that that works perfectly. So we have the output is an H1 tag followed by my title followed by a closing out H1 tag. So that is awesome. I'm going to delete this and let's run our code. So I'm going to say RSpec. This is January 2017 at the time of this recording run this and we have uh, one example and zero failure. So that is working perfectly. Great job if you went through that. You now know how to use a more advanced form of string interpolation where that allows you to pass in collections into strings.